Hi. Ooh. Ooh, yes, this is a good angle for me. So here's the deal. My dad and my brother are actually working in here, and so I am going to have to do a voiceover video for this soap. I don't like doing voiceovers, but I really, really, really want to film this today, and I have to make this soap today. I have a limited amount of time to get this done. This is the Holly Berries soap. So it has some red and some green, and it has, like, this pretty cool, like, shimmery gold on top with some little, like, Holly Berries, and I'm, like, consistently looking at the door because I know they're just gonna come in talking. Anyway, it has some little holly berries on top, like little red embeds within some little leaves. It's really, really cute, so I wanted to film it, and I just thought, you know what, I'm just not gonna be able to do it um, with me talking and stuff like usual because they're gonna be working. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm showing you guys are the two accent colors that will be drop swirled into the main soap. And this first one is going to be red, and I am using really red mica from Nurture Soap Supplies to color that. I'm using about one and a half teaspoons of that. I'm also using a liquid colorant from Wholesale Supplies Plus, which is the Brick Red, I believe is what it's called. And I'm using about half a teaspoon of that. And then for the green, I'm using about a teaspoon and a half of green vibrance mica from Nurture Soap Supplies. And then I'm mixing up the big bucket of the base oils and the lye water that has a little bit of titanium dioxide in it so that the base is going to be really nice and white. And then I'm going to pour them into the little mini buckets and give those a good stir with the stick blender. I should also probably tell you that I have already added the fragrance oil, and it is actually one that decelerates trace. So instead of speeding it up and making things thick really fast, it actually makes things go slower. So you have plenty of time to do a really pretty drop swirl. So now it is time to begin pouring, and the first thing that I'm doing is putting in the white base color, and I'm filling it up about two-thirds of the way full, and next I'm putting in the accent colors, and red goes first. Look at me, I'm actually getting my colors right this time. In my last video, I think it was the peppermint candy one, I was like, I'm gonna pour the white first, and then I poured the red first, and I didn't even catch it. Like, I, I don't know. I'm completely colorblind or something. Anyway, yeah. Pouring red first, then we're gonna pour green, and then we're gonna put white on top of that, and I'm gonna continue to alternate it every single time until the entire mold is completely filled up. Piping time, piping time, time to pipe the soap. I have already piped one of the loaves here, at least the first one, and I'm doing four across because this little piping tip is a little smaller than the ones I use, and obviously the piping is gold this time, which I don't do very often. So I'm going to speed this up. This is five times as fast as I normally pipe, and I am filling in the little gaps here so that it doesn't have holes whenever I cut the actual bars. Speaking of the actual bars, I seem to have lost the footage of me cutting this soap, so at the end of the video, I'm just going to have to show you guys a couple of individual bars after they have sat for about a week, um, and so they look pretty much the same as they did when they first cut, because there's no discoloration here. Now I'm going back across all the bars, and I'm adding one big fat dollop on each side, you can see I'm squishing it out there on the sides. Um, this looks really, really nice, actually, whenever the individual bars are cut. It looks a little funny, I think, on the loaves, how they are now. It looks kind of lopsided, but once they're actually cut, it has a really cool shape and ends up looking like sort of like the top of a castle a little bit. At least it does in my opinion. After I finished piping, it's time to put all of the little embeds on top, and you can see that the piping is now a lot shinier, and that's because I was going to cover it with um, some gold mica airbrushing, and then my little sprayer broke, and that was frustrating. Um, <laughs> and so I'm putting these little red soap balls on top, which yes, I make them all myself, I don't buy them, and yes, they are soap. I have a video on how to make them on my channel. And now I am putting on the little holly berry leaves on each side. These are cold process soap that I piped two or three days before and then sort of peeled them off the freezer paper and are now adding them just like regular glycerin soap embeds that I normally use. And I'm putting them on one side and then I will change and I will put them on the other. 
So this is what the entire soap looks like in the mold. Isn't it shiny, shiny? I love, love, love the tops of these. These are some of my favorites to make for the holidays. And now I'll show you what they look like once they're cut. This is what the soap looks like after it has already been cut. It has actually been a long time since I cut these soaps, but I had to film the outro um, at a different time than the intro. So you can see I have a lot more um, soap bars there than I originally uh, made in the video. I actually made, let's see, I think it was one more set? Yeah, I think another set of that. So yeah, you can see the red is really, really pretty. Look at the glitter! Isn't the glitter so pretty? That gold glitter from Nurture Soap Supplies, let me tell you, it is a dream. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, even though it was a voiceover. Um, if you did, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, maybe even leave me, you know, a comment below. I hope you have a smashing day, and I will see you guys next time. So until then, bye for now.